everybody. Got an interesting problem for you today that actually tripped me up last week. And so I wanted to run through it with you in the hopes that if you encounter it, it wouldn't cause you the same problems. And in the midst of that, what I also wanted to do was to preview an incredible new tool that we're going to be rolling out next week for Enterprise DNA members. And it's, it's one that I love and I'm using constantly now and wanted to show it to you just in a, in a special sneak preview here. So the problem that we're going to be looking at today is how to count selections in a slicer. And it, it seems like it should be easy, but there's a little there's a little hitch to it. And so what I've got here is just a, a garden variety slicer that I've set up as a as a multi select. And what we want to do is just count the number of selections made in that slicer. And there's a lot of reasons we could we could want to do this. Um, for me, the particular use case that I had was I was building a dynamic Venn diagram inside two slicers, and I wanted to count the number of selections made in each and then compare which ones were common um, across the two. But there's, there's a whole variety of use cases. And really what we want to do here is just look at the general case of counting the, the number of selections. And so before we jump into the DAX, instead of jumping into the the kind of terrible featureless editor that we've been using for the last five years. I want to jump into something called DAX Editor Pro, which is built by Microsoft MVP Greg Deckler, um, especially for Enterprise DNA members. And I have just I've just gotten to love using this, and I wanted to show it to you while we build out our, our code today. So we're going to start by building just a basic count measure. We'll just call this um, basic count. And what we want to do here is just count rows of the selected uh, elements of the of the slicer. And so for a multi-select, that's going to be values. And then it's just going to be the field that we, we have in the slicer, which is countries visited countries. And we'll close that off. And you can see in this editor, when you close it off properly, it gives you this, this collapse. And so what we can also do is just hit that with the, the formatter. And we'll save that. Oh, and we just want to, it'll ask us for which table we want to put it in. Let's put it in our measures table. Key measures. And we'll save that. and we will jump back into Power BI. Okay, and there's our basic count measure. And let's drop this in a card. And so right away we can see there's a problem, that we don't have anything selected, and yet it's showing basic count of five. And if you think about the way slicers typically work, so let's, let's actually, let's just see if it's working in general. Okay, so it looks like it looks like this is good, with the exception of when you've got nothing selected. And in most cases, that's going to be okay, because if you're thinking about like if you're filtering, let's say sales amount, if you don't select anything, that typically means you want to select everything. But in this case, where we're counting the number of selections, it's going to give us a wrong result, and that's actually what happened to me is I didn't. I didn't take into account that edge condition where nothing was selected in the slicer. And so instead of getting what should have been zero, I got five. And so let's take a look at how we would, we would differentiate the two. And we're going to need another measure. And let's, let's, let's actually, let's, let's do this one upright in terms of not just the count, but let's give some descriptive text around um, what we're selecting. So let's go back into in the DAX Editor Pro, and let's do this right. Okay, so we want to create another measure. So let's just hit New. And this measure we're going to call Correct Count. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable. And that variable is going to determine whether or not there's anything selected. So we'll call it any selected. And the key function that we need here is one called isFiltered. 
And what is filter does is it it does exactly what it says, which is it, it it's a Boolean function that gives you a value based on whether or not that field is has a filter on it or not. And so in the case where you have no selections in the slicer, is filtered is going to be false. And in any case where you have selections in the slicer, is filtered is going to be true. Okay, so let's, we could just, in a sense, stop there and build a really simple measure off of that is filtered. But let's, let's do this upright. Um, so the next thing we want to do is let's count our, um, let's count our number of selections. And in this case, what we've got is just basically the same thing that we had in the in the previous uh, measure, which was our basic count. Okay, and now what we want is we want to look at what our max number of selections in the in the slicer is. Um, so let's call this max selections. And that is just going to be um, calculate, and then count rows, and it's our countries visited table. And now what we want to do is we want to remove any filters on that table. So that is going to give us unfiltered the maximum number of rows in, in that table. And the maximum number of selections, therefore, in the slicer. And, and when we close that off, it gives us the... Uh, the collapse bracket and now what we want is now we're gonna we're gonna go into our result we're not going to worry about formatting for now because we've got the auto formatter um, and what we want to do is we've got a, a series of conditions here so the best way to do that is with a switch true statement and let's look at our first condition. So the first condition is if any selected is false. And so that's if there's no selections made in the slicer. So any selected equals false. And in that case, what we want to return is just no countries selected. So now our next condition is if there's one selection. So in that case, we've got um, count selected equals one, and we can just say one country selected. And now we want to go to the other end of the spectrum and say, um, what if we've got all selected? And the way we determine that is if count selected is equal to our max selections. So in this case, that's going to be if count selected is equal to five, then what we can say is um, all countries selected. And let's put let's put the number in there. So what we can do is um, concatenate, and let's throw our um, our max selections number in here. Max selections, and we concatenate, and then let's put the the text for the closed paren in. And now we've got our last condition. So we've got. We've got none selected, one selected, max selected, and now it's everything else. And so what we want to do here is just say, um, 
some countries selected. And let's put, again in parentheses, and in this case, let's, oh, actually, let's take the parentheses out. Let's, let's try something else here. Let's, let's return the, the number of the max on a new line. And so what we want to do there is concatenate, and we can use Unicar 10, which is hard the code for hard return, and then concatenate that with our paren text. And then our uh, count of selections. And then concatenate that with, uh, we want to put a concatenator in here. And then we want to put of, and then another concatenation. And then we want to put our max selections. And then we want to concatenate another close brand. And let's close that off. And we can see that again we get the, the collapse. So we've got the right the right parentheses in there. Um, and then we just want to return our result. And now let's hit this with the formatter. And it formats properly, so we know we've got it, we've got it structured properly. And so let's save our correct count measure. Correctly saved in key measures. And we can add some descriptive text in here. We can say um, correctly counts selections in a slicer. And if this were something other than text, if this were, you know, returned a, a latitude or longitude or um, an image or something, we could we could actually set that set that right here. But in this case, it's uncategorized. And so let's let's save this back. And let's return to Power BI and let's see how we did. So now we're going to take this correct count and turn that into a card. And let's expand this out. And let's make it a little smaller. That's going to not give us enough room here. So um, let's take this and let's make the callout value like 24. OK, so that's we're off to a good start here. We can see now it's it's correctly denoting the fact that we've made no selections. Now let's let's make one selection. One country selected. Some country selected two of five, three of five, four of five. And all countries selected five. So that's it. That's that's now how we can correctly count our slicers. The key really being the the is filtered. Um, and that's what makes the distinction between the, the, the all and none. Um, and so I hope you found that helpful. And I'm going to be coming back next week with the start of a series where we're going to go through all of the incredible tools that Greg's created for us, including and starting with the, um, with the DAX Editor Pro. So I uh, hope you're looking forward to that. And um, I'll see you in the next video. So as always, thanks for watching. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.